So I'm going to go ahead. Thank you so much to everyone. It looks like we have mainly two, ones and twos in the audience. So um, this is this is wonderful for me to know moving forward. A um, couple of things. Uh, like Sean already alluded to, we are actually um, under the WeVideo umbrella. Play Pause it was acquired by WeVideo back in, um, I believe it was August of 2022. So almost a one, one full year of um, combined partnership. And so what you will notice is that Play Pause it is completely subsidiary from WeVideo. So some of you may be familiar with the, the Wii Video terminology or the platform uh, editing, video editing platform of Wii Video itself, but PlayPosit actually operates completely separately from that um, technology. And so you'll only really see the Wii Video illusion in my email handle, madison at wevideo.com, or in um, some of the resource branding that I'll be sharing with you. So just to kind of like put that out in the open so that when you're looking at these things, you don't get too confused about how PlayPosit and WeVideo uh, go hand in hand. I am the point person for PlayPosit uh, platform implementation at the University of Michigan. So um, you can call me your customer success manager, you can call me your account manager, point person, um, consultant of sorts. But my role here is really to help you all, whether you're an instructor, an instructional designer, a department lead or a department head, to find value in this um, institutional license that you have and figure out a way to use PlayPosit to increase engagement, to add um, tracking opportunities, to add, um, you know, more aligned assessment with course content that you are creating. Um, that is my role here. So if you ever need to reach out to me, this is my email handle. It will be included in a follow-up email. Um, and then the second thing to know is that if you are a user and you ever experience any form of technical difficulty or issue, um, I'm also going to be sharing in the follow-up a technical uh, support line that we can share, help at playposit.org, that you can reach out to. And we have a great team of technical support specialists that um, prop up our platform and, and make sure it's working smoothly and seamlessly for you guys. So um, a little bit about me, I have been here at PlayPosit for several years. Um, and prior to that, I was an educator myself. And so a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you today, hopefully will be coming from a similar place of implementation that you're, you, you're looking to use the platform for. Um, so please know that uh, I will be talking about some of the data and the analytics, the different assessment options that you have with our interaction types, and then even highlighting some of the additional applications that you guys have access to that may um, be helpful for the, um, the different structures that you have in your different courses. So what we're going to do first is um, I'm going to kind of just lay out an introduction to the platform and kind of give you an introduction of what is PlayPosit, when and how you might use it. And then Sean and I are going to work together to share with you about some really successful use cases, specifically in the Physics 250 course um, that has been running for the past several years um, and has now acquired over more, almost more than 50,000 engagement hours with students due to PlayPosit implementation in the course. So that means uh, over 50,000 hours of the student's time in the last two years has been spent um, in PlayPosit learning objects or PlayPosit assignments, which is really powerful for um, a license or an institution, uh, an institutional license your size. So we're going to be talking about a really successful use case that is already up and going at um, the University of Michigan. And then we're actually going to talk about a lot of different things that PlayPosit can do. Um, I'm going to do a lot of talking today. I'm going to do a lot of sharing about um, the functionality of the platform. I'm going to be sharing about um, different ways that you can um, change 
different interaction types or different workflows to fit your specific course needs. But there's really no reason to feel like you need to absorb it all or catch it all. We are recording the session. And in the chat, I'm actually placing an interactive handout that is specific for you all um, and is aligned with your LMS. So what you will find in this interactive handout um, is that you will actually be able to find resources that walk you, guide you, support you through the Canvas and PlayPosit integration specifically. Additionally, there's going to be some um, like I guess you could say more uh, advanced resources that are on that handout as well. Um, if you catch on and you really want to run with the platform independently and asynchronously on your own, I'm going to point out where you can kind of self service or self guide um, your own learning after our session today. So to kind of give play posit a really strong foundational introduction. Um, I like to describe our platform as an instructional design studio. So what that means is that you're going to be able to use all of the traditional instructional video content that you use, whether it be video lectures from Kaltura, supplemental video content, from YouTube or Vimeo, and you're going to be able to pull in that video content into our design studio and then overlay on top of that video any type of interaction, whether it be assessment or just engagement based um, that you want your students to engage with while they are simultaneously watching the video. So like I mentioned earlier, several use cases for for really using PlayPosit. Um, some may be more assessment based. You may be looking to use the interaction types in our platform that allow for you to tie to a grade in Canvas and, and assess your students. Some of you may be looking for more um, delivery of content. So you're looking for using our rich text editor to give files, to give PDFs, to um, allow learners reflective points throughout the video, um, and you're looking for more points of engagement rather than assessment. I'm going to show you different options for that as well today. Additionally, um, on the back end of all of the overlays that you create on top of your video content, you're going to have access to tracking. And when I say tracking, um, any form of student interaction with the overlays is going to be viewable to you as the instructor in the monitor page. So with the Canvas and PlayPosit integration, you guys do have automatic gradebook passback with the linking of PlayPosit content in your Canvas courses. Um, a course aligned with your Canvas gradebook and your Canvas setup, um, point setup that you already have established. Um, you can tie points to the different overlays or interactions. They're actually called interactions, but I like to think of them as overlays because something that I do want to reiterate to you all is that you are not changing the video itself. So the video will remain, um, it will remain the same. You can actually build multiple learning objects with the same video content, but add different overlays to create different student experiences. Um, but again, that's just highlighting the modularity and the, the really flexibility of the platform. So that is PlayPosit. Um, if you have any questions, what I want to encourage you to do at this point, since we are doing a bit of an introduction, and this is very um, important to, to kind of the, the rest of our agenda. If you have any questions about capability, functionality of the platform, if you wouldn't mind throwing those in the chat. Um, the great thing about our interactive handout is that it is actually a handout for you all and um, for this session specifically. So it is a live document. If there's a question that comes through in the chat that I can't answer live because maybe I need supporting resources or I need to check with another team, um, I can copy that question and I will place it in the chat in the FAQ section at the bottom and answer it later. But all that to say, I would love your questions um, as we are guiding, um, as I'm guiding this time um, 
um, for us today. Okay, so a bit of a a bit of an introduction of to the view of the inside of our instructional design studio. Um, on the right hand side, what you're seeing is that video content. You're also seeing here below that timeline. So the video gets placed in play posit and it gets stretched in a linear way so that you're able to place those overlays and interactions at points where you're again wanting to engage your students, ask questions, but all of that is editable. It is modular. So let's say you need to uh, change the timing after you've built the interaction, you can most certainly do that. One of our most successful um, use cases at uh, University of Michigan, again, has been um, an additional successful use case, has been with several language courses. And so you can use the rich text editor when building out the question types to add audio recordings if you would like that to accompany the question type that you are adding. Um, if you're looking to do, you know, language acquisition with your students. Um, so the, again, this is just a glimpse into the designer. We're going to we're going to go in there and really take a look and see what is of value to you all. But at high level, some things that you can look to do with building an interaction is, um, again, ask a question that's aligned with an assessment question type or an instructional model that you're trying to uplift in your course. Um, multiple choice, polling, check all, those are uh, several of the interaction types that I think of when I, um, when I highlight like assessment with play posit. Um, but if you're looking to increase communication and collaboration within your course, within video content, um, a couple of interaction types that I think about are the discussion interaction and the free response interaction, because you can actually mimic a classroom discussion in play posit with our discussion interaction. So students would be able to talk with each other in live time um, through a discussion forum about the video content that you are displaying for them. So I think about the discussion interaction. I think about free response because if you're looking to kind of assess students on the quality of a response, that's also something that that students can attach a file to if it's a you know a need to um, attach an essay to go along with their response or a sources site, a, like a you know, sources cited MLA um, page that can also be attached, that can be attached within a free response interaction. Um, but as you were seeing here, the designer gives you access to create whatever type of assessment or engagement um, overlay that you are looking to do that aligns with the video content and your instructional model or your course model. So now what you're seeing is a very, very basic learner view. So the student is watching the video here. I'll play that one more time. The student is watching the video and then this interaction appears from the left hand side, um, completely optional. This location, it is um, default left hand sidebar. That's where the interaction appears. You actually can place the overlay wherever you would like. Um, but it does appear from the left hand side default and it pauses video playback. So whereas um, a traditional model for viewing video content in a course is to watch the video maybe asynchronously or in the lecture itself and then to have the students potentially complete some type of competency based assessment on the video content this is happening in live time so the video con uh, the video plays it pauses feedback when the interaction appears and then the student has the opportunity to hear uh, uh respond based on the interaction type that you've created this is a free response interaction the student does have access to a rich text editor so again the language courses really benefit from this specific feature because the student can record themselves, connect that to their response, 
submit that. And then the instructor, thanks to the monitor page, can go in and listen to the different re uh, recordings and responses and then assign a score based on the competency of the response from the student. So taking probably the three step process of delivery of content, assessment of content, gradebook input of content, and putting that all into one singular experience that seamlessly gets passed back to the Canvas gradebook. So kind of making your life as an instructor much, uh, you know, we all are, we, we know that educators of any type across the board are tight on time already. And so what this does is it allows for you all to kind of cut down and save time on, on that multi-step process. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and move forward. I haven't let this word slip, I don't believe, and I'm I'm pretty proud of myself because most times I do, but a word that you are going to hear me say quite a lot over the next, you know, 40 minutes or so is bold. And that is actually the name for an entire video experience that you create and play posit. So one singular video assignment that you link in Canvas is called a singular bold. So that's kind of like our traditional most frequently used self-paced um, assessment type or, or um, sorry, learning object type. So again, it's typically one video interactions tied to Canvas, tied to your LMS, and the student is getting one grade for that uh, experience. That is called a bulb. Um, the reason I wanna break it down into uh, the different layers is because PlayPosit has a variety of different applications that you all actually have access to. So if you take those singular bulbs that you've created, so maybe they're lecture bulbs and you have recorded yourself or pre-recorded yourself um, at the beginning of the semester giving a lecture and you want to create an exam review video um, with interactions overlaying on top of that lecture video and assign it at the end of the semester for exam review, you could actually take multiple bulbs, stack them on top of each other with PDFs, certificates, um, websites, text items, and create in a modular and table of contents format what we call a playlist. So you can take your self-paced bulb, turn it into a playlist and have, you know, a certificate of completion tied to that playlist, a mini course of sorts. And that is also an asynchronous delivery option. So you have your bulb, your playlist, something we're going to talk about a little bit further down the agenda today is our learner made bulb um, individual submission option which is where you get to flip the script on the student, you give them a prompt or a task, and then they become the designer. So they click into the assignment and then they are taken to the instructional design studio. So they are responsible for building a bulb that is tied to the task or the assessment that you have assigned to them. So again, individual submission for the student is what we call a learner made bulb. We do have a peer review application. We won't go there today or, or really talk much about that. But we do have a peer review application where students can create and then assess each other. And then the synchronous delivery option that we have is our broadcast option. Um, but we're gonna focus mainly on self-paced today playlists and then our learner made bulbs um, and to just uh, this is something that I like to share because usually we get the question of why bulb um, why that language what is that word what's the significance there and I, I really think that it's powerful the explanation because if a bulb is created fully and completely meeting your needs as the instructor and the student's needs as the learner, a bulb should be really illuminating for, for both parties because you're going to be able to, in live time, track and see what your students are 
catching, showing competency of, an understanding about the content that you're delivering to them. And it's gonna happen in live time. And then the student is going to receive based on your settings and the way that you build your bulb, the student can potentially also receive that same in time feedback about what they're understanding and what they're not understanding. One of my biggest pain points when I was an educator was the lapse in time between content delivery and assessment. And I struggled with content digestion with my students. So how, how um, long it took to you know, deliver a lecture and then actually be able to assess them on the content of the lecture. But with PlayPosit, it can happen simultaneously and it actually has been proven to expedite com content digestion and expedite uh, learner impact. So um, this is a little bit about, again, the foundational parts of our platform, what is available with uh, PlayPosit Interactive Video. And um, again, we're going to dive into this further. But um, at this time, what I would like to do is I would like to circle back to Sean. Um, Sean is a team member working with the LSA that has been integral in the success of PlayPosit up to this point. Um, going back to what I mentioned earlier in the agenda, one of the most successful um, applications of PlayPosit up to this point um, with the University of Michigan has been with the Physics 250 courses. Um, and there have been many instructors and many um, individuals who have made that a successful implementation and use case, one of them being Sean. But like I mentioned earlier, there have been over 50,000 um, total engagement hours spent on the content that's been created in PlayPosit for just this one um, course implementation so over the last several years. So um, it is active. It is being used by instructors and the engagement hours that are coming from the content um, are really high especially for an institution your side. So I would love to invite Sean to just speak a moment or two about what his experience has been um, with supporting PlayPosit in these courses up to this point, and then maybe even share about um, what his role is uh, going to be and hopefully bringing about more successful implementations alongside myself um, for the semesters to come. So Sean, I'm gonna shoot it over to you for just a minute. Sure, that's a lot, but I'll, I'll try. Um, so let me talk a little bit about Physics 250 first. Um, so this was kind of the impetus for us to seek out PlayPosit and um, find an alternative to Kaltura in video quizzing. Um, and so uh, this class is a flipped class uh, of about 150 to 200 students per semester all year long. Uh, and so they're watching somewhere between five and eight videos a week. Uh, and every single one of those has a quiz. Um, and so if you think about that logistically, like that's a awful lot of quizzing that is going on in that class. Um, and they were experiencing about a one to 2% error rate with Kaltura quizzes, um, where either for whatever reason, students were um, not successfully completing the, uh, the the quiz. The quiz was not uh, uploading into the grade book. And so if you think about that in terms of that many videos, that many students for the entire semester, it was a burden um, on, on the GSIs and the instructors in the course. So we sought out PlayPosit because we had had a couple of uh, uh, interactions with them years ago um, when the LRC uh, implemented it. And we thought, well, maybe that would work out. And what happened with that class um, is pretty dramatic. So they had a they hired a, uh, a a temp worker to come in to kind of convert all of their videos over to uh, PlayPosit by creating all the bulbs and things like that. And so there was a lot of labor kind of moving all that all that over. But what we found was during that first semester that we that we implemented it, there were zero issues. Um, there were there were absolutely no tick created for that course um, that uh, whereas before we would have 15 to 20. Um, uh, and so it was it was quite a relief. 
uh, on, on their part. Um, but what they also noticed too, and what, what kind of drove us to think about this in a larger scale of just replacing IVQ with, with PlayPosit is that they um, started to realize that there were more features, right? They started to realize that they could get the analytics on the students. They could they could um, add different kinds of question types. They could um, do different kinds of interactions with students, you know, through the through the application, and that kind of drove um, them to rethink how they're how they're implementing the videos, um, and and add more. Uh, you know, um, like quantitative analysis, right? So it's a lot of a lot more um, uh, problem solving, things like that into the question banks. Um, and it it has really helped their course a lot. Um, our goal going forward with this is to um, help instructors find out about this product, um, but also to um, help them see that that um, if you want students to watch course uh, watch course content outside of class, um, that adding some kind of interactive element to it uh, and putting some points uh, associated with it will help students um, uh, will encourage more students to to watch them. Um, and uh, and it's not that difficult um, to add these interactions once you have the video content. Um, and so um, for us, it's about shepherding those people um, in to help them um, get started uh, and to start thinking about what kinds of um, video content they want to add to their courses. So since this is a uh, thank you so much, Sean, that was awesome. Thank you for even highlighting. Um, like I mentioned earlier, one of the perks of having a license with PlayPosit is that to alleviate stress of um, scaling a tool like PlayPosit internally at the University of Michigan, we, we do encourage and hope that um, your instructors, faculty, staff will use the help at playposit.org um, line for our technical support specialists to streamline any type of request or issue that is experienced. Um, and then obviously the more instructors that we have using it, we can kind of create more solutions so that we can avoid that all together because we all know that just, um, it, it prolongs uh, a successful implementation of a tool if there are technical issues. So we are happy to, to kind of have that uh, really strong layer of support. And we hope that that will continue to be something that you all see value as, as we scale further beyond um, with PlayPosit. Um, but since this was a specific uh, University of Michigan use case that we were talking about here and one of like more of the original um, reasons for purchasing the license, if you have any questions about that, uh, those courses, other courses, um, curiosities, please feel free to use the chat. I really, I really do mean it when I say I, I would love to see kind of like your thoughts or even if there's something that I'm saying that's resonating. I know we have, you know, an instructor on the call. If, if anything is resonating and you're wanting to kind of like take a detour today to, to highlight some of the question types or use cases that you'd be more interested in, we can do that as well. Um, okay, so shooting back to um, the agenda, I do want to take a moment to highlight some of the features of PlayPosit that have been valued at the University of Michigan in the past, specifically for the language courses, but these are definitely in no way limited to one course uh, or one implementation. They are available to all, and um, these are just, you know, again, features that are available um, that I kind of have seen be used and appreciated um, with, the, with the bulbs that have been built at the University of Michigan so far. So first is that discussion interaction, um, especially for courses that are looking to really, really build up their um, collaboration efforts with students. Um, this is a really important time to talk about the, the discussion interaction and it being available because um, if you are ever thinking or if there are ever courses that are thinking about um, assigning or getting out preliminary course content before the 
start of the semester to kind of give students um, like premium access to, uh, you know, previewing any type of video about the course or about the instructor. If you pull that video content into play, pause it and, and assign a discussion interaction that gives students an opportunity to introduce themselves to one each uh, to one another before they even meet within the course or have discussions about their level of understanding around a topic before the course even starts um, so I have found that one of the times of year that our discussion interaction really peaks across the platform um, and across institutions that we support is the start of the fall and the start of the spring semester, because a lot of instructors use this discussion interaction as an opportunity for students to really um, come together and collaborate asynchronously and synchronously um, and, and kind of meet one another within that discussion interaction. Um, additionally, in every single bowl that is built by any instructor and assigned to any student, across the platform, the student is going to have access to what is called an embedded learner notepad. So right within the video, right within the interactions and the question types, the student is going to have their very own notepad where they can take their own personal time stamped notes. So ways that this gets to be very, very beneficial for the student is that they are time stamped. So once they complete the bulb, for a grade, it gets passed back to Canvas and they can preview their bulb or see their responses after they've already had the grade passed back. They can actually go to their learner notepad. It's time stamped. They can click through the time stamps to the points in the video where they you know, maybe ask certain questions. And this is completely viewable and searchable by the student but also the instructor. So think about how powerful it would be if your, if you as the instructor had the ability to view full class notes on a lecture and you're able to search for keywords like confused or this is a question that I have and then use that information or insight to guide your instructional practices moving forward. The learner notepad is great for that. Feedback poll. This is going to be something that sorry Madison, I, it's, yes. Phil, it's Philomena speaking do you yes. have a slide that shows a, an illustration of those two features so we can get an idea of what it actually looks like um, yeah absolutely um we are going to move into the highlighting the use cases here in a moment and so okay. I'll point out All the right. feature thanks with a visual yeah okay. um and also, and this is a great this is a great time to share with you guys about this. Um, if you click on the interactive handout, you will see that um, there are different uh, resources that are linked here. Um, some of them are linked to tutorials. Some of them are linked to what we call our customer resource page. But our knowledge base is a really great resource. Um, and right within our knowledge base, um, you can do things like search for keywords. Um, and let's see, let's see, learner experience in an LMS will find take notes on a bold. And here you will see that right within our knowledge base, we um, give you access to an article that you can share with your students that actually shows them where to access their learner notepad. Um, so Sorry, this is like super zoomed in. This is on my second monitor, so things look a little um, wonky. But you have access to this knowledge base, and it's completely searchable. And um, there are even some student-facing resources that are in there. So um, definitely check that out. That will be something that will be a long-standing resource for you moving forward. Um, but thanks, Philomena. In the coming slides, I'll kind of show you a visual for the uh, for these things. Feedback poll, this is using our, our, our polling interaction to kind of gain feedback from your students. Um, we know that right now is in a really important time uh, to make sure that students are um, engaged and not having passive learning experiences because there is so much asynchronous assignment um, 
you know, opportunities that are being given post COVID and during COVID. So um, gathering feedback from your students, if maybe it's a completely online course or a majority online course, you can always plug in a feedback poll at the end of your bulb so that the students can give feedback and you can give points for that or make it participatory. Um, we also have a uh, template gallery. Our feedback poll template can be automatically applied. I mean, you don't have to build it out every time, but it is editable and you can change the language and the wording to match uh, your needs. Auto-generated feedback is still in that same stream of thought. You can actually build in um, auto-generated uh, responses for your students to see based on their interaction answer choice. So let's say a student chooses the wrong answer option in a question, you can auto-generate feedback for them to receive um, that one may extend their learning. So you may link an article within that feedback or two, you may just let them know that they need to, you know, revisit a certain topic. Um, so you can really, and then the third option would be always, if it's the correct answer, you can always build in positive reinforcement with um, positive feedback there and even extend learning by offering more advanced concepts to be kind of linked within that feedback. Lastly, I've already hinted at this and, and kind of shown you how you can do this, but it's using that rich text editor to allow for voice recording opportunities. Again, a really successful use case already in the language courses that use PlayPosit, but a great way also at the beginning of the semester to connect with your students as an instructor. So not just uh, a linking a syllabus, but maybe building a bulb or a video that introduces yourself and then having the, the opportunity to record your voice and connect with your students and even hear their voice, depending on your course model. So moving forward, Phil, I see your hand. Yeah. Yeah, Phil speaking. Um, the voice recording in the rich text editor, is that also in the discussion interactions or no? Yes, absolutely. So the students have access to the rich text editor in their any time that a student can click and type, they yeah. actually have access to their rich text editor. Um, so uh, you'll see that and you'll actually see an example of a discussion interaction and the voice recording going in. Um, but yeah, great, great question. That's awesome. Thank yeah. You much. Um, and because I do work with a variety of instructors that use a variety of different media options, um, I do just want to let you know that even if you are not using a video, you can use PlayPosit. Like if you are one of the instructors or you're supporting a course where um, there are podcasts being used, MP3 files, Yes, I believe it's MP3. Um, it may be MP, yes, MP3. Whew. There's just so many numbers, so many abbreviations and letters nowadays. Um, but yes, uh, if you are using podcasts with MP3 files or audio files, you will see that you can actually upload directly within the designer that MP3 file or select it from your desktop and your students will be listening to that file um, and then you can add overlays and interactions just as you would with the video um, content from a YouTube video or a Kaltura video. Um, but again, giving engagement and giving, um, you know, uh, opportunity for student assessment in a resource that has historically been a very passive experience for students. So video watching, podcast listening. Um, and this is an example of that discussion interaction. And this is actually one of those templates that's being applied. So this is a discussion interaction template. Um, you could build the discussion interaction. It doesn't have to be this templated discussion. Um, but here you'll see that it is completely editable. So you can click and you can um, change the wording and change the language in those templates that are create that are applied as well. Um, but this is our discussion interaction where students are actually uh, shown what the discussion interaction is going to consist of and how to use it within PlayPosit. So, and I know it's hard to see here, Phil, 
but this is an example of a student responding and there they have access to their their audio recorder within the rich text editor so don't be afraid to use those mp3 files those favorite podcasts that you would use within your course as well all right so these are some use cases that you will see across the board being used these are not by any means exhaustive or end of the road for how play posit can be used but these are just instructionally ways for you to start thinking about integrating play posit within your course so let's say you are recording a quick video um, and you're looking to implement more skills practice with your students you're wanting them to work through a problem obviously probably not this elementary but again this is a low low lift um, use case you could record yourself you could find this video online um, but this the goal here is again skills practice so the student is listening to direct instruction they're watching a concept maybe a demo of like uh, again like thinking back to the physics 250 course maybe there are demo live demos that are happening that video content of the recording of the demo is being shared and then you'll see here that the student is going to have an interaction where they are going to be instructed did to at the end of the video so at the end of the demo at the end of the direct instruction the student is being prompted to download a pdf where there are questions that the students will then use to complete their uh, fill in the blank uh, questions or assessment questions so they're using this pdf um, to guide their uh, responses. And then you will immediately see once the student submits those answers that are aligned with the questions in the PDF, that they're given automatic answer highlighting. So they are immediately seeing what's correct, what's incorrect. And then this is where you could build in that auto-generated feedback. So like for instance, where there are all of these incorrect answers, instead of incorrect you could build an auto generated feedback that could say um you know please review page 12 of our textbook or you could say please watch this video to remind you or to um you know revisit the content that you obviously um are are not absorbing completely so automatic answer highlighting the grades are automatically documented the student completes the bulb and then the last uh the last step here would be for them to watch to the final timestamp, and then that grade is passed back to the canvas gradebook so take advantage of using play posit for those uh, skills practice opportunities even if it's not for a summative assessment grade even if it's just like a formative assessment opportunity next would be um, an interactive video lecture so again like maybe this is a pre-recorded lecture and you're wanting your students to have a live discussion about the pre-recorded lecture um cutting down on in-class lecture time um, you could have students here in this discussion interaction again highlighting our template our discussion interaction template you do not again have to use the template from the template gallery you can just build the discussion interaction on your own um, but again the student can respond and then it is time stamped they can see each other's responses they can reply to each other's responses um, and you as the designer have a setting in the advanced settings here's an example of that response here you as the designer have a setting in the discussion interaction where you can actually require the student to respond with a unique response before they're able to see their peers responses so i know that a lot of instructors hesitate with discussion interactions or discussion forums because as soon as the students submit you know they could potentially be using other students um and uh, responses to inform their own so if you're wanting to make it a little bit more um of a legit assessment option you can always enable that setting or disable that setting um that is the default it's not enabled but um just something to consider as well 
Um, another thing that I like to point out about the discussion interaction is that it can be made participatory. So you can make the discussion interaction worth five points and you can make it auto graded. What that means is when the student submits their initial response, they would automatically receive those five points and then they would move forward in the bulb. So something to also think about is if you're looking to use the discussion interaction for a more summative assessment opportunity, you may want to unclick that setting and you may want to make the discussion interaction manually graded. So that would mean we would go into the monitor page, assign a specific point per the student's response, and then have that automatically at that time a manually synced, sorry, not automatically, manually synced to the Canvas gradebook. So again, an example of the discussion interaction, probably one of my favorite interaction types, um, definitely underutilized. Here you're seeing um, check all that apply. That's another answer uh, question type. You, you're also seeing a, another feature of our platform where you can st uh, stack interactions where the student is answering multiple uh, questions at the same time. Um, you can make discussions durational for the entire video. And that's actually what you're seeing here is that the discussion interaction is not going to go away. That discussion is being uh, viewable and uh, clickable for the entirety of the video. So the student can actually like add um, questions or comments as, as the video persists. All right, the bulb is complete and then it is passed back to the Canvas gradebook. But another feature that I'm pointing out because I do want you, I, I would like for you today to see all the things that you may potentially want to explore. One is the ability to enable an exportable, an exportable worksheet. So our exportable worksheet is a way to allow students to see their bulb questions, interactions, and answers in a printable PDF fashion. So if you enable the student to export their attempt or their worksheet, you will see um, at the end of the completion of the bulb, they can view their results. And this is actually what that um, what that worksheet looks like. So at the top of the worksheet, and I want to catch a screenshot here, at the top of the worksheet, the student will see their name, the number of points that they received out of the number of points that the bulb was worth, and they'll also see a completion time and completion status. Here they will see the interactions as they are linear, and then um, of course, they're seeing their correct and incorrect answers. All right, so uh, exportable PDF is another favorite. Um, and then moving on, another option that I wanna show you for just stirring ideas and showing you different use cases is what, again, we would uh, consider to be an interactive video lecture of sorts. So this is where you're bringing in maybe supplemental video content and you're just adding learning objectives with our pause interaction, adding images, giving students the ability to really engage with the content, even if it's not um, pre-recorded lecture content, but maybe it's supplemental video content um, from a third party. So here you're seeing um, a couple of things. One is utilizing our reflective pause for something that is really impactful, um, using it for like key terms, key vocabulary, a reflective a moment. You're also seeing that the bulb itself can be used to showcase the features that the student has access to. So you can build out a little hotspot if you would like, showing them where they can access their embedded learner notepad um, right within the bulb. And again, video playback is paused. The student is copying the vocabulary, copying and then pasting into their learner notepad that important vocabulary for the remainder of the video. 
You're seeing an example of what we call a durational interaction as well here, which means that the pause, because it is key terms, are remaining on the screen for the entirety of the uh, entirety of the video. And just for time's sake, um, we're going to go ahead and move forward, but um, multiple choice uh, interactions are a favorite of many. Um, using multiple choice to mimic true false, if that is a question type that you regularly use in your course. And several other interaction types that may be of interest to you, uh, you will find um, when, when you hop into, uh, hop into the designer. Again, today is a little bit more about showing you what you can do with PlayPosit and just um, highlighting the different functionality and the different features. But of course, um, there are tons of introductory resources for us to get you started. Um, with that in mind, we're actually going to, in our, in our final moments, we're going to hop into um, my Canvas account, and I want to quickly show you how you can just access PlayPosit today, because I do want to ensure that you feel confident just finding your, your PlayPosit account. Um, and then kind of exploring and seeing and working with Sean and other designers and other support uh, members who um, know the platform to find what features and what type of design uh, features and functionalities are most relevant or most uh, impactful for you. Okay, so I am in a test course right now. Um, you do have a University of Michigan um, license and integration. And so you're going to be able to launch directly from Canvas. It's very simple. It is very easy. Um, but accessing the assignments tab will give you the option to just build a new assignment. You don't necessarily have to give it a name unless you're planning on actually linking something that you build today which you may, after this session, be inspired to actually go and build something today. And if you want to link it directly into assignment, you can. Um, but uh, I'm just going to scroll down to the submission type box because this is kind of where the money happens. Um, you're going to find a submission type box. You're going to select the external tool. And then you're going to actually find... Play pause it. So it should be listed in the list of your external tools. It will not look like mine. I do apologize. This is a testing environment. So you're seeing a ton of uh, play pause it names. You should only have one play pause it. Here is my play pause it deep linking um, uh, account. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. You can click on yours. And then you are going to see our traditional gray screen where you are prompted to enter PlayPosit. And once you do this, you will be launched into your account for maybe the first time, maybe not. Maybe you have some bulbs that you're seeing here that have Canvas icons by them because you can actually link them directly within your course um, if they have been built. But maybe you have an empty bulb library. Maybe you have um, nothing uh, in the library that you uh, can access. That's okay. We do have a pre-made bulb library for both um, all of PlayPosit and your institution. So if there are bulbs that have been made public by anyone at the University of Michigan, specifically probably in the LSA in the past few years, if there's any content that you would like to copy from that pre-made bulb library, you can just click on this little thumbnail and actually copy it into your account. And then of course, if you just wanna copy from the all PlayPosit pre-made bulb library to have a sample bulb, you can do that here. Um, but this is actually in your bulb library going to be where you can launch and start building a new bulb, accessing that video content, maybe from Kaltura, YouTube, or Vimeo, and then hopping in to see um, all of the interaction types that you have available to you. Um, adding your video content is going to be very simple. Uh, that's probably the easiest part of all of this. The, the next thing that will require most of you to, um, you know, put in your, 
your um, instructional thought is thinking about what type of interactions you'd like to build. So uh, I, the last thing I'll kind of do here is highlight the different interaction types. So here you can see multiple choice, check all, free response, fill in the blank, polling, discussion. And again, all of these are gonna be able to be added and then actually placed and, and um, created to meet your needs with specific advanced set settings across the linear timeline of the video. So um, everything is kind of laid out for you here. It's very, um, I would say that PlayPosit is very intuitive to learn. It's exciting because you can always build something and then delete it. Um, I would love to just see if there are any questions um, in the chat. I'm gonna check the chat really quickly with a hands-on training. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Philomena, for that plug. Um, we have a lot of asynchronous resources that are more hands-on tutorials since this was a little bit more of what can you do with PlayPosit and so I want to show you where one really important resource is located. Um, so something that you will see is um, that you in your PlayPosit account have access to what we call our customer resource page. So at the very bottom in your PlayPosit account um, there is a, a, a tab that says customer resources. It used to be partner resources. Now it's customer resources. But if you click on it, you're going to see that it, you are taken to a hub of all things PlayPosit. So you're going to see PlayPosit Academy, which is an eight module um, LMS specific onboarding training, which should take like 35, 40 minutes just showing you how to launch, build, and link within Canvas. We have past webinars that you can watch. We have those use cases in our use case library. We have a ton of great resources in that knowledge base uh, that I mentioned and highlighted earlier. We actually have instructional design office hours where you can come and ask questions twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then um, if you'd like to get on our mailing list, uh, our newsletters, you can do that in the customer resource page as well. Um, this has been wonderful. There is a ton that we still have left to kind of uncover about PlayPosit, but for the most part, this is a really, um, a really holistic overview of a lot of the different things that you can do within PlayPosit. Again, like Philomena re uh, kind of uh, reiterated here in the chat, um, now we can move forward with more hands-on opportunities for workshops for you all in helping bring to life the uh, learning objects and bulbs that you're looking to create um, with the Instructional Design Studio.